Okay, so this is part two of the magic triangle. And the concept of the magic triangle, as long as we got our servers ready to go to start this process, is that we have an environment that is a mixed environment with both Windows clients and Mac clients. And when you have an environment where you have hundreds of Windows clients, you want to be able to manage those by modifying the settings that and the experience that they're going to have when they sit down at the computer and they use it. So we manage those Windows clients with group policy, right? And the, the group policy sets a lot of different settings, one mapping drives, running scripts, setting access to the control panel and what they have, forcing a password after two minutes of inactivity with a screensaver, things like this that we force upon uh, the, the policies on these computers. Well, when you have hundreds of Macs as well mixed in with this environment, how do you force those settings on the Macs? You do that with system preferences or managed preferences. And in order to do that, just like with Windows, we needed a Windows server to, to manage the group policies. With the Macs, we need a Mac server to manage the policies for the <coughs> Macs. So we have to set up what's called a magic triangle. The magic triangle is the active directory, the open directory, which is running on the Mac server, and the client, whether the client is a PC or a Mac. The, the setup is we have to have open directory using the active directory server as the Kerberos um, domain controller. The, or the key distribution server. It's the KDC, the key distribution center. So the, the Windows server holds all of the accounts, all of the users and groups exist in Active Directory. So we have one directory to manage and to organize all of our users. Open Directory will then read that information and utilize the users and groups that exist in Active Directory. So we only have one place to manage our users and set passwords and, and so forth. So Open Directory is then going to bind itself to Active Directory, just like we bind a workstation to Active Directory or when we join a domain, that's binding that workstation to the, the directory so it can utilize Kerberos in order to access different resources. Well, what that does is allows Open Directory then to allow a user access to the different services that are running on the Open Directory or the Mac server. Some of the services are the web services, the wiki, XSAN, and a few others. So this, this allows the Mac server not to hold a separate list of users and passwords. It will allow the Kerberos ticket that the client requested from Active Directory to be used when we're grabbing information or using services that the Mac server holds. Now, on the client side, the third the, the third corner of our triangle, any PC or Windows-based computer is going to have to be bound to Active Directory. That's where we join that workstation to the domain. Any Mac client is going to have to be joined to both Active Directory, so we have to join that Mac workstation to Active Directory domain, and we also have to join it to the Open Directory domain. And the purpose of having the Macs bound to both directory services is because they have to be bound to open directory in order for the managed preferences, the managed system preferences coming from 
the Open Directory Apple environment to force upon these workstations the system settings and preferences that we want. So the managed preferences on the Mac side are just like group policy. So you can't use Windows group policy from Active Directory and force settings on a Mac client, on Mac OS X, because those settings don't exist in an operating system. They're two separate operating systems. So you need an Apple server in order to do that. And this Apple server, as they're selling, is just a Mac Mini. It's just a small little server. All it needs to do is force those managed preferences down to the Mac workstations, the Mac clients. That's it. It's all it's doing. So it's just, a, it's just another box that allows us to manage the Mac clients. That's pretty much it. There's other services that we can invoke on it or start, like the wiki, the web services, calendaring services, messaging, but we don't have to if we don't want to. The, the primary goal here is just to be able to manage our Macs like we manage our Windows clients in an Active Directory environment. Okay, so moving on with our attempt to follow uh, the typical procedures that we used with an older versions of the Mac OS X, and we're going to do this on a uh, mountain lion server and see if we can't get this bound to our Active Directory. So again, to review, our uh, Active Directory was advancednet.net. So if I use the command host space advancednet.net, it should resolve to the IP address of our Active Directory server, our primary domain controller, which it does. So with this, we are now going to move to the next step. We need to make sure that time is synchronized. As I said, Kerberos is being used. So we need to go into system preferences on our Mac and make sure that our Mac is going to get its time from the directory service that we're going to use and we're going to utilize as our Kerberos KDC. And we do that underneath our uh, um, I'm blind here yeah I can't find it date and time bottom there it is alright so under date and time we have set date and time automatically we're gonna change this instead of using time.apple.com we're gonna use the IP address or the name and to be safe in case we update our Active Directory domain controller let's use the name so we're gonna update it with server01.advancednet.net and it should update the time to the exact time that our server our Active Directory server is. Now we have to bind our server to Active Directory. So we're going to go underneath users and groups. We're going to go to login options. And this is where we're going to identify network account server. We're going to unlock it. And click join. And we're going to type in our Active Directory domain advancednet.net and computer ID this is the name of the server server 02 we have to type in our Active Directory administrator user and that's going to be administrator and our password and hit OK and let me turn my password again is the directory setting should be server 01? No, the client computer ID is this computer right here. This is the Mac server. Yep. Our, our Active Directory server in this example is server 01, and our Mac server is server 02. And add, <coughs> admin user? 
admin shouldn't be L admin? No, the admin user is the Active Directory Administrator account. So if I switch over to my Active Directory Administrator account, I can open up Active Directory. So we just logged in under Active Directory User Administrator. That's who we just logged in as. And that, if we now take a look at our computers, we now have not only our workstation, but we also have our server 02. And again, as you can see up here, this is server 01. So 01 is our Windows, 02 is our Mac server. Okay, next, in the older versions of the Mac OS X, we had to configure Kerberos from the command line. So we're going to open up a command prompt and type dsconfig ad enable single sign-on. So enable SSO. And I did something wrong here, so let's take a look. Um, I'm going to maybe make the assumption that single sign-on now is turned on by default. Let's do a show. So the command I just typed is this, dsconfig ad dash show. And this is going to show our configuration for the uh, Active Directory binding. It shows our Active Directory forest and domain and our account name on Active Directory. User experience, right now it's at create mobile account at login is disabled, require confirmation. Protocol to use for home path is SMB, which is the server message blocks. Um, generate Kerberos authority enabled. So SSO single sign on is enabled. So it, in the past ones we had to make sure that we enabled that. So we don't have to do that now. That's enabled by default. So that command we don't have to type. So anyways, this is a good command to use to see how you are configured for Active Directory. All right, that leads us to the next step. We're going to now open up the Open Directory and start Open Directory as a master. So we go to Open Directory. And it looks like our options are just turn it on. Create a new open directory domain and notice that the it wants to create an administrator which is separate from our local administrator. So our local administrator on this Mac server is ladmin for local admin and it's going to create a separate admin account for the open directory service and that is defaulted to dir admin which is good. And go ahead and set your password And enter the name of the organization. This information should be shown to users to help identify them. So we're going to do advanced net. And an email address so they can contact us. Um, we're going to see if we can't just skip that. No, oh, it wants it. So let's go admin dir admin at advancednet.net. Let's try that. So here's what's going to be set up and we click the setup button. We should see it create the open directory service.
Yeah, it looks like it's working. So it looks like it worked. And we're not going to modify any passwords. So now, just to see how things are going to work, let's go into the uh, applications and under utilities. Mm, they removed them, it looks like they're all down here below. Go to the users pane up here at the top. And the users pane at the top, we're going to go users from advanced net. And there it showed our users from advanced networking. So let me switch over to my server, my Windows Active Directory server. And let me create a user in here just so we can see. So that user now exists. Maybe go off of that. There it is. So now it showed up. Now I can't edit these users from this pane because these users exist in Active Directory. All I'm doing is reading that they exist. What I can do is I can create a group here. I can create a group and call it test. Hit done. I can open up that test and I can add members. And I'm going to add Aaron. So the user Aaron is now inside this test group. And that Aaron user actually is an Active Directory user. So that means now if I am going to create a service or give access to a resource on this Mac server, I'm going to apply permissions to this local test group and because the Active Directory user, Aaron Halverson, is in this local test group, they will be given access to that resource. So that gets in the whole concept that we learned about Active Directory creating global groups and local groups. This is a local group, but the user is a global user coming from Active Directory. Okay. So now we're done with this. The next step is to start up our uh, Mac workstation and bind it to both directory services and see if we can't log in as a user and uh, have a uh, an environment that we can manage our Mac clients.